Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Fatima. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, uh, before I begin, just a special thanks uh, to my brother, uh, Gene Zanetti, and also a good friend, uh, David Annunziata, I almost said father, but uh, just of uh, teaching me about the whole Fatima message since I was young, my, my oldest brother and, and then David uh, recently within the past you know, six years or so, or maybe even more. So, so thank, thank God for them. Uh, and that's why it's so important to have uh, just really good family, you know, that we uh, pass on the faith. You know, really, thank God. He passed on the faith as from, from a young age, so, you know, that's awesome. So make sure that you're not only um, you pass it on, but your, your oldest children are passing it on. So good, good older brother and good, good friend. So thank, thank God for them. So we'll begin about uh, Fatima, okay? So we'll, get, we'll cut right to the chase here. So you cannot be an effective devotee of Fatima while remaining in mortal sin and continuing to offend God regularly. So what does that mean? We need to have sanctifying grace in our soul. And so regular confession is essential. And pretty much this is baseline Christianity. Pretty much everything I'm going to say is, is like baseline Christianity. That's, that's pretty much what Our Lady is saying. So what, what is one of the first things Our Lady say uh, to the children? Stop offending God. He's already so much offended. And so what does this mean? You've got to get in the state of grace. So anyone who attempts to do anything in the spiritual life, whether it's pray, fast, give alms, corporal or spiritual works of mercy, there's no merit if you're not in the state of grace. And, and why is that? Because when we're in the state of grace, you know, as Scripture tells us, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And so the Father sees in our soul the face of Christ and that's when we're pleasing. That's the only time we're pleasing. And that begins at our baptism. So the state of grace is essential. So no sanctifying grace in our soul. There's no merit. So it's all about Christ living in our soul. And to quote St. Augustine, he says, One drop of grace we receive is worth more than all the riches in the, of the universe because it's a participation in the very life of God. And so the gratuitous gift of our baptism is greater than the creation of heaven and earth. Just think about that. If people only knew that, it's greater than the creation of heaven and earth. Just one drop of sanctifying grace. And so again, Christ has to be in our souls to merit anything. You know, our Lord clearly says in the gospel, without me you can do nothing. And so if we're going to merit anything, again, we need to be in the state of grace. And our Lord also says, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you do not have life within you. So the Fatima uh, devotees, and really all Catholics, must heed Our Lady's main request, stop offending God. And that was reiterated by the seer, Saint, or Sister Lucia, who was left alive for this purpose, to make sure that the Fatima message was spread. Again, it's, it's baseline Christianity. Stay in the state of grace. And so we could say the main message of Fatima is regarding the salvation of souls. So your own individual soul and others. In the July apparition, the children were shown a vision of hell. And Our Lady said, You have seen where poor sinners go who have no one to pray for them and make sacrifices for them. And what did the children see? But they saw souls falling into hell like snowflakes, and they were burning. And so the message of Fatima is the avoidance of hell, and again, living in a state of sanctifying grace. And why is that so important? Because again, staying in the state of grace renders us effective in the spiritual life. And this isn't, again, a new revelation. It's just basic catechesis, and Our Lady restating that. You know, how many times does she have to appear to just say, stop offending God, you know, to, to live a holy life? And so, again, for the, the, the Fatima message, so before we dive into the main messages of Fatima, uh, 
of what Our Lady asks us to do, it first and foremost, again, rests on that foundation to stop offending God, all right, and get in the state of sanctifying grace so we could live a truly, a truly Catholic life. You know, it's Christ alive in our soul, the Holy Trinity dwelling in our soul. Now, this isn't to make everyone scrupulous. That's not the goal of this. Um, but we do want to have frequent recourse to the sacrament of confession. And do, we all, do all we can to live the moral life and living a virtuous life. And it also requires great trust in God. You know, one of the things um, I know uh, Father Ripker has said, you know, no one can have absolute clarity about the state of their soul except those to whom God reveals it. And that, he says, that's extremely rare. So there, there is that trust. You know, we, we go to confession regularly, but we also have to trust. Okay, Lord, as far as I'm concerned, I, I, I haven't committed any, you know, mortal sin, you know, God willing. Uh, or, you know, obviously we want to avoid um, uh, venial sin as well. And uh, so again, if, you know, we can never have absolute clarity. And if that scares you, that scares me too, because I, I worry about that myself. So, you know, that's, I think that's all of us, you know, we have to have that great trust in God. You know, so can we, act, can we be absolute, 100% certain that I'm, I'm not in a state of mortal sin? We, we can't. But one of the things that helps me, and I, th I think for all of us, is the prayer of St. Joan of Arc. Lord, if I'm not in the state of grace, please get me there. If I am in the state of grace, please keep me there. You know, that we say that frequently. You know, it, it's, by, it's by God's grace that we stay in the state of grace. You know, like St. Therese says, all, all is grace. So this revelation of Fatima, as well as every other re re revelation, again, goes back to the basics. You know, what does the Lord start his public ministry? Repent and believe in the gospel. And that's, that's what he kicked it off with. You know, repent and believe in the gospel. And so we could see two core principles, too, at the center of the Fatima message. And again, really at, at any, every devotion, uh, any, any devotion in the church. And so the first is devotion and the second is reparation. And so devotion, you know, lasts forever. You know, St. Paul says, in the end, what, what lasts? Charity. That's the only thing. We won't have faith, hope, and love anymore, or faith and hope in heaven, because we'll just, we'll, we, um, we'll, we'll see God face to face. So only, only love will last. So devotion lasts forever. But reparation lasts until Christ comes. And that's in this life and also in purgatory. Except the, pur uh, the reparation of purgatory, that's not meritorious. Uh, but they have to do that and, you know, to, to make up for God's justice. So devotion is all about us growing in love for God and for the salvation of souls. And then reparation is about doing the works our Lord tells us in order to make some re repayment or restoration from what we've taken from God, what we, what, what's owed to God. But actually, as I, I was driving over, another, another way we could think of reparation, too, um, is really consoling the heart of Jesus. You know, consoling the sacred heart, consoling the immaculate heart of Mary. So not just thinking it, you know, always maybe in, in negative terms. It's like, oh, I have to do this. I owe this to God. No, I want to console the heart of Jesus. You know, I want to enter into a deeper union with God, a deeper love. And so the, the Fatima message, of course, is about the salvation of souls. Again, our individual souls and others. And so no one can climb the pillars of devotion to Mary and our Lord, again, without standing uh, in the state of grace. So, as, so we could say, you know, the state of um, sanctifying grace is the single most important thing in this life. That's why it's critical we get baptized right away. Um, that's, again, that's the indwelling of God within us. That's critical. Because, again, the time spent in, um, not in sanctifying grace that merits us nothing. Uh, and, and in this state, really, we're enemies of God, and we never, we never want that. And of course, God is always working to bring us out of that state, uh, but we don't, we, won't, we don't want to stay there. Um, and why is that important, too? Because any, any prayers during that time, you know, any, any, you know, any merits we might have gained, are, are, there's, there's nothing. So we're not storing up anything in heaven at that time. So we, we got to, you know, if we're not in the state of grace, grace we got to book it to confession, you know, and, and get, again, get in the state of grace. And so, but one thing about that, you might think, well, all right, if I'm not in the state of grace, I should, just, should I just stop praying or take off you know, my scapular, renounce my consecration? That's, that's certainly not it. We've got to keep praying. In fact, whether you sin mortally or venial, it, venially, 
the first thing we should do is pray. You know, anytime, anytime we know we've, we've hurt God, we, we want to we make some type of act of reparation, even, even if we're not in a state of grace. You know, again, Lord, help me to get there. And again, if it's a mortal sin, we want to book it to confession. You know, essential. But I want to just focus, too, again, more on the positive, not, not just stop offending God, but it's really moving from, from vice to virtue. You know, from servile fear to filial fear. You know, be, to becoming, uh, you know, a sinner to a saint. But that really only happens when we fall in love with God. And that's, that's what all the reparation is about. It's about consoling the heart of Jesus. You know, so, so many times I think, you know, I, I don't know about you, but in my own life it's like, you know, I, I just don't want to offend God. It's like that's, that's really... You know, that's kind of the defense. We want to be on the offense. Lord, I, I want to, no, I want to love you more. I, I want to give you my whole heart. You know, we, we hear in, um, in Scripture, the book of Hebrews, you know, God is a consuming fire. You know, so we want to catch that fire. And we want to spread it to others. You know, I, I love, I love the, um, the prophet Elijah and the Lord, you know, appearing to him. You know, and he says, you know, Elijah, why are you here? I've, I've loved this since I was young. And Elijah, you know, Elijah answering, I have been most zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the Israelites have forsaken your covenant. He says, you know, I'm the, I'm the only one here, you know, um, the, only, the only true prophet, you know, kind of holding down the fort. So that, and that's the same with us. Like, like, why are you on this earth? Why did God put you here? And I think that should be, I think that's a healthy response. Why are... You know, when, when, when God asks me, you know, why are you here, Father Greg? You're Greg. You know, he's not going to call me Father. But, <laughs> you know, why, why are you here? And, and I, you know, I, I hope I answer every day. You know, I've been most zealous for the Lord God of hosts. You know, that we have that, that awesome love for God. That we, we set, set our hearts on fire for love of God. You know, again, that, and that's, that's what devotion is all about, you know. Why is it just, oh, I, I just, I want to stop offending you. It's like, that's, again, we're on the defense. We want to be on the offense. No, I, I, I want to do this to love you. It's, it, and yes, we want, we, want to, we want to be as close to God in heaven, you know, uh, and we want as many merits as possible, but it's to be as close to him that we're focused, that our focus is solely on him, you know, on, on God. So, you know, why not, why not all of us go for that? Imagine, imagine every Catholic saying, I want to love you, God, like no soul ever has. And that's going to look different for everyone because we have a different state of life. But again, you know, God created every one of us for a specific person. Only you could fulfill that mission. I, I can't do it. You know, I, I, I have my mission as a priest. And ha- however God is going to work that out, I hope I, I keep saying yes. You know, we keep saying yes, as Our Lady always did. But, but that we, I, you know, I hope we all have that, that fire for God. You know, that we, again, God created us with the individual graces, talents, state of life. It's like, I want to give that unique love back to you. You know, I think of St. Therese, it's like, you can't beat her. It's like, she, she falls, she's falling asleep in prayer, and she just throws her hands up. Lord, that's why I need you all the more. It's like, you know, you can't beat her. It's like, because she just trusts in God more. It's like, the, the lower she, you could say, the lower she falls, the more trust. And that, that should be the same with us. The lower we fall, okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to. I'm trying to live a holy life, but I'm going to trust in your mercy all the more. You have to lift me up. You know, what does she do? She just throws her hands up. You know, the, the Lord has to pick her up. It's like, just let him pick you up. But one of the things, you know, uh, when, when we grow in devotion, when we grow, um, is, is part of that is reparation, you know, co- consoling the heart of Jesus. And what is that? That inevitably, inevitably entails the cross, but, you know, that, that suffering, the, the more that happens, and again, it's not we're, we're not just looking for suffering, suffering's sake. That's, that's crazy. But we're doing it, we're accepting whatever God's willing to send us. But that suffering becomes sweet because it's like, Lord, if that's what you've given me, I, I accept it. And just living in God's will. And so, again, with all that said, obviously, stop offending God. So now that we have that, that's our foundation. Uh, we can enter into the five pillars uh, or five components of the Fatima message uh, which can be remembered by a mnemonic device. So I'm not going to take credit for this. I'm gonna, that's, this is Gene. This comes from him. So very, very helpful. Uh, Roman Catholic SOS. Okay? That's, that's our mnemonic. Okay? That's our SOS to call down help from heaven. So the five pillars. Okay? It's R-C-S-O-S. Okay? So the R stands for rosary. 
The, the C stands for consecration. The, uh, the S stands for scapular. The O stands for offer sufferings and sacrifice. And then the S, Saturday, the first Saturdays. Okay? So once we're in the state of grace, we can begin. So we'll begin with the rosary. So obviously, uh, we want to do the rosary daily. Um, uh, and along with the other uh, Fatima prayers that Our Lady taught. But I um, just want to share a quote from Sister Lucia. And I, and I mean, we have countless quotes from the saints, how, how powerful the rosary is. Uh, I'll mention some of them, but I think this one is, is one of the most powerful ones from Sister Lucia. She says, In these last times in which we live, has given, God has given a new efficacy to the recitation of the rosary, so much so that there is no problem no matter how difficult it is, whether temporal or above all spiritual, in the personal life of each of us, of our families, of the families of the world, or of the religious communities, or even of the life of peoples and nations that cannot be solved by the rosary. There is no problem, I tell you, no matter how difficult it is, that we cannot resolve by praying the Holy Rosary. With the Holy Rosary, we will save ourselves, we will sanctify ourselves, we will console our Lord and obtain salvation for many souls. That, for me, that, that does it. I mean, I, there's other quotes I have here, but there, there's no, there, you know, no problem that we can't solve, no matter how difficult, temporal, spiritual, uh, than by, by praying the rosary. So, I mean, what a gift. That, that you know that thinks, I, I got I to gotta be more conscious when I'm praying my rosary, you know? Like, this is, we're, we're in the battle, you know, when we're praying the rosary. And we know it's, it's all the mysteries of our salvation, too, um, as we pray the rosary. But I'll just say, uh, share some other quotes, you know, if, if that's not enough. I, I personally think that's enough, but we get some other saints in there. Um, St. Louis de Montfort says, the rosary is a priceless treasure inspired by God. St. Pius the Twelfth. There is no surer means of calling down God's blessing upon the family than the daily recitation of the rosary. St. Leo the, uh, the or Pope Leo the 13th. The rosary is the most excellent form of prayer and the most, most efficacious means of attaining eternal life. It is the remedy for all our evils, the root of all our blessings. There is no more excellent way of praising, praying. And then blessed Pius the Ninth. Give me an army saying the rosary and I will conquer the world. That's us. <laughs> uh, so, so what, and St. Francis de Sales, I'll, cl I'll close, uh, conclude with this one. Uh, the greatest method of praying is to pray the rosary. And so what is Our Lady asking? At least five decades every day, and then along with the, um, the, the decade prayer that we conclude with the, oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins. So one of the Fatima prayers. And then we want to conclude, as we did today, praying for the Holy Father to gain the indulgence um, and so how do we gain an indulgence praying the rosary? It could be in a group, a church, an oratory, um, under the normal conditions, or in front of the tabernacle, and that could be actually by yourself. And so what are the normal conditions? So let's just look at the normal conditions that we see pretty much, again, that requires, if, if it's going to be efficacious, requires a state of grace. No surprises here. Uh, complete detachment of sin as, as any uh, indulgence work we do. And one way to kind of cover that, you know, how do you, how do you kind of like have the detachment of sin? But I say a prayer. You know, I, I personally say this prayer if you want to say something else or something like it. I think it's helpful to make some type of um, intention. I say, you know, Lord, help me to be completely detached from sin and to be attached to you alone. Simple. You know, just, just to state our intentions. And then, you know, so we, we do the rosary, do the work, pray for the Holy Father, you know, traditionally, one Our Father, one Hail Mary, glory be. So, pretty simple. So, and again, notice, notice the Lord with any, any indulgence, it's all aimed at the same thing. It's like, what does that require? The prerequisite. Stay in the state of grace. Complete detachment from sin. To do the work, pray for the Holy Father. It's like, that's pretty much every, that's, that's every indulgence work. And what is the Lord getting at? It's like, we want to we stop offending God. We want to get, get in the state of grace. Stay there. And not just that, but the complete detachment from sin. Now, yeah, that, that's difficult, but we pray for it. And again, that requires, what is that founded on but trust? You know, Lord, please give me that detachment. I don't, I don't want to sin. Help me, help me to be attached to you alone. 
Um, so again, ba based on trust. And, and so, again, we see at the core, it's, it's devotion and reparation. Because uh, we could offer it up uh, for a plenary indulgence, or even a, if we don't get the plenary, the partial indulgence for our soul and the souls of the dead. And that, that's critical that we do that for the dead. You know, we're going to want that when we go. Um, you know, can't say that enough. You know, how many times we hear, you know, we're going to celebrate this person's life. It's like, <laughs> you know, we do that when somebody's uh, canonized <laughs> or, or beatified. That's when we celebrate your life. So just to really get, you know, for other people like, you know, no, we have to have many masses said for them. Even if they received all their sacraments, even if they, they, were, they received confession, they were anointed, they received the apostolic pardon, please have many masses said for them. Like, that's not the time to stop. We're, we're all going to want it. Keep, and if they're in heaven, they're good, now they're going to make good on that for us. So, you know, flood heaven with prayers, that's, that's, always, that's, that's always the goal. Um, so then we also learn the other Fatima prayers, the pardon prayer. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll pray each of them. So the pardon prayer, my God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I beg pardon for all those that do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. Again, we see it's gain, go, going at um, greater love for God. And, and again, reparation. I beg pardon for all those who do not believe. And then the Eucharistic prayer, Most Holy Trinity, I adore you. My God, my God, I love you in the most blessed sacrament. A very simple prayer. Another, again, an act of love. You know, St. Teresa of Avila says, you know, um, prayer uh, doesn't consist in, in um, uh, speaking much, but in loving much. You know, we don't, we don't need many words, you know. We could, and then that time, too, with silence, just a side note, but very important to, to spend time in silence, you know, that, that we allow, um, you know, God to love us and we love him to listen, you know, allow him, allow his love to penetrate, you know, the, the depths of our souls. Then there's a sacrifice prayer. I'll, I'll speak more on this uh, later. And then these, there's the angel's prayer. O most holy trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly. I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifferences by which he is offended, by the infinite merits of the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg the conversion of poor sinners. Okay, so that's the first rosary. So that's, that's the Roman. Now we get to Catholic. So consecration to Our Lady, personal consecration. So Sister Lucia asked, you know, why does it have to be this way, that the triumph can only come about in this way? And our Lord says, because I desire to place devotion to my mother's heart alongside my heart. And so we see a, that's, a, that's a critical element of this devotion that the two hearts, the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary, are intimately linked. And so, you know, who wrote the book of, of um, True Devotion to Mary but St. Louis de Montfort? And so at least three popes have said, you know, if we want to know what true devotion is to Mary, uh, it, to look at this, you know, to read this book. And, and so, um, and what is this book based on about personal consecration? You know, we're talking about a consecration of a country, but... We can't just talk about the consecration of a country, too, if we're not talking about our own personal consecration to Our Lady. So that's important that we live that, that consecration as individuals. And to share a quote from St. Maximilian Kolbe um, about the Militia Immaculata, and you see someone who's just a, a Marian giant, he's just on fire, he says, the mere thought that his soul is still unaware of even the name of Mary will give the Militia Immaculata members no peace they long to conquer the entire world for, to her, to introduce the Immaculata in every heart that beats and will ever beat under the sun so that she might enliven the hearts, those hearts with an abundance of grace, warm them with, the, with the, mother, the love of her motherly heart and enkindle them the fire of love toward God and the divine heart of God. So what, I mean, when I hear that, I, I hear Elijah, I have been most zealous for the Lord God of hosts and also his mother. So it, it's, it's both, uh, those two hearts. And so when we, we give ourselves to Our Lady, you know, when we consecrate ourselves to her as, as her slaves, you know, she owns all of our actions and merits. And, and, you know, she really knows best, you know. We really don't know what to pray for, you know. I mean, we, we pray for good things, but when we give them to Our Lady, you know, she, they're going to go in the best, she's going to use them in the best possible way. 
And that, that gives me a lot of peace of mind. I don't, I don't know about you, but if you've, if you've done the consecration, because so many people, you know, you know pray for me, and it's like, I, I'm going to pray for you, you know, and, and I do. But wherever Our Lady takes those prayers, they're in a much better place than if I was to pray for you. Maybe she took care of you last year, you know. Who, who knows, but that we entrust it to Our Lady, that's, that's so important. Um, and, and what is that, you know, again, she, she knows better than us, and she knows, again, how best to use them. Um, so in the consecration, you know, we hand over our whole life, all the merits of our good actions, we give them over to her. You know, we, we joke in our house, you know, our stuff is now her stuff, you know, and that's, that's for the good, you know, that's for the best. You know, she's the best of all mothers, she's going to take care of us. And so she becomes, as, as we know, she's the mediatrix of all graces, and so she's also the dispensatrix, um, dispensatrix of all the graces uh, re receiving gain. Um, so again, she, when we hand them over to her, she's going she's gonna to make good on them in a, the best way possible. You know, I love, I think it's um, St. Louis de Montfort. It's like if, if all we have is, a, is a, an apple to offer or whatever it is, you know, and it's, it's dirty, but, you know, we want to give it to God. You know, what does the Blessed Mother do? She polishes it up. She takes all the dust off it. She puts it on a golden platter, a nice, a nice um, you know, all the stuff around it, and, and gives it to our Lord. It's like that's what she does with everyone. When we consecrate ourselves to her, that's what she does. That's a lot of peace of mind for me because, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of dust on those apples, so, or whatever we're given. Um, so that's why, and, and f funny thing about my... Um, when I, we were going through the consecration the first time, my spiritual director, we were talking about the consecration, and he just said, like, marrying consecration is a very natural thing. And, you know, we, we kind of we joke about that, say, but that's so true. It's like all the graces are coming from, from her anyway. We might as well just get on board, you know. Uh, and they're, again, they're all coming through her, so we might as well just consecrate ourselves to her and make it, make it official. So we have uh, the consecration. So there's different ways of, of consecrating yourself and, um, you know, Maximilian Colby says, any formula will do. Um, you know, there's the nine-day Colby consecration, if you want to get it done, you know, as soon as possible. Um, there's the 33-day Michael, Father Michael Gately version. That's the first one I did. I, I think not bad for, for beginners, uh, because you learn what the consecration is. You learn different saints uh, and, and how they've um, really consecrated themselves in their lives. And then there's a the 33-day, the St. Louis de Montfort one. Um, with um, a lot of uh, excerpts from the Imitation of Christ and, and his book True Devotion, uh, so whatever whatever consecration form we do that but that we do it, you know, again we give Mary the total ownership, complete ownership of our lives. So the value of all our good deeds we give to her, um, and so she she uses those as she sees fit. Um, and again, that's that's the best way. Um, so that when we die, you know, when we're consecrated to to Our Lady, she'll be our advocate at our judgment. Um, and when, because when Jesus asks for an account of our lives, it'll be Our Lady who will describe everything she's done, you know, and, and everything we've given over to her. So that's, that's a great place to be uh, when you die. And uh, just another quote from uh, St. Louis de Montfort, you know, he says, you know, that personal consecration to the Immaculate Heart is the shortest, easiest, quickest, and most efficacious path to heaven. And again, that's why Maximilian Kolbe, you know, is, is like, we got to consecrate the world, <laughs> like, you know, really taking that seriously. It's like, because we want, we want saints. And we want that in the quickest, shortest, quickest, easiest way, most efficacious possible. How do we do that? It's like personal consecration to Mary. And that's the pinnacle of, of true devotion to Mary, to give ourselves to be a slave to her, the best of all mothers. Okay, so that's personal consecration. So that's Roman Catholic. Then we have uh, S, the SOS, so scapular. So during the final apparition at Fatima, Sister Lucia and Saints uh, Francisco, uh, Francisco and Jacinta saw Our Lady appear as Our Lady of Mount Carmel, holding the baby Jesus, and she held the scapular in her hand and, and gave the scapular. And so Sister Lucia clearly told um, Father Rafferty in an interview uh, that Our Lady did this because she wants us to wear the scapular as, a, as our sign of, as, um, of our own personal consecration. And so I could share... Um, it was in 1950, he interviewed her, just the, the um, question and answer. Um, so he, he asked her, why did Our Lady come in that way? What did she mean you know, as Our Lady of Mount Carmel? And so Sister Lucia answered, she meant that we should wear the scapular. And he says, how do you know that? She answered, 
Father, I saw the Blessed Mother. I know what she meant. If I had misinterpreted her message or had a different idea than she wanted me to have, Our Lady would have spoken about the scapular. And so to make sure, he said, I tried to phrase the question in, this, in different ways. And so he said, I'm going back to America. Everyone in America believes that there are four conditions of the Fatima message. First of all, we are to say the rosary every day. Secondly, we are to offer the sacrifice of daily life. Thirdly, we are to make communion of reparation on the first Saturdays. And finally, we are to consecrate ourselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And she answered, there's one more condition, the wearing of the scapular, the symbol of our consecration. And so the brown scapular must be worn as a sign of our personal consecration to Our Lady. And we know that it was um, uh, to St. Simon Stock that Our Lady uh, gave the, um, uh, shortly after she gave the rosary to the world, she gave the scapular, and Our Lady said, take this scapular, it, is a, it, is, it shall be a sign of salvation, a protection in danger, and a pledge of peace. Whoever dies wearing the scapular shall not suffer eternal fire. But we also see there's another uh, promise that was uh, later attached to this, the Sabbatine privilege, and that Our Lady promises to free from purgatory on the first Saturday after their death, all who wear the, the scapular devoutly, devoutly, observe chastity according to their state of life, and every day cert say certain prayers, the little office or the, um, the recitation of the rosary, so that could be transferred by a priest. Most priests transfer it to the rosary. And so, and we could see how that's connected to the Fatima message, because when does Our Lady take, if the soul is still in purgatory, when does she take them out? But on the first Saturday after one's death. Um, so, that's, so that's one of the, and, and think too, one of the things Our Lady told uh, the children is that, you know, mo why do most people go to hell is for sins of the flesh. You know, sins against the sixth and ninth commandment. And so what is one of the conditions of the Sabbatine privilege? To observe chastity according to your state of life. Um, so we see, again, with, with all these devotions, it's, a resp you know, it's, it's um, I could say proactive, I'm not going to say a, re a response, but proactive of, of what's going on in the time. It's like, yeah, many people are, like, chastity is not even a virtue. It's actually looked down upon now. And, and you know, what is the Sabbatine privilege? It's like, okay, wear the scapular, observe chastity according to your state of life, and pray the rosary every day. So we see that. It's all, all bringing us back. Um, and again, what does that uh, require, the prerequisite, the state of grace? Next, uh, so that's scapula, that's S. Now we're on O. So offer up sufferings and sacrifices. So when our sacrifices and, and sufferings, when they're united to Christ, uh, they're united to the cross. And that's when we take active part in the redemption. And again, the fun, fun, fundament, fundamental uh, principle, got to be in the state of grace. And so what does our, our Lady say? You have seen where poor sinners go because there's no one to pray for them and make sacrifices to them. And so Our Lady taught them the sacrifice prayer. And we could, we could do this anytime we offer up some suffering or sacrifice. Oh Jesus, it is for love of you in reparation for the offenses committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary and for the conversion of poor sinners that I offer up the sacrifice, the suffering, whatever it might be. But again, short prayer. Uh, but with great love. And, and what is the goal? Again, for love for Jesus and, and love, love for Our Lady. So again, very, very baseline uh, Christianity. And, and what is it doing? It's helping us to really to live the two greatest commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. It's like all for the love of Jesus and, and for the conversion of poor sinners, love of neighbor. So it's, it's again, very, very basic. Um, but we need this, you know, we, we need these, we need a, apparently our lady has to keep appearing, you know, to, to just keep, keep repeating basic catechesis, which, you know, we all need it, you know. So we have the best of mothers. So she's going to keep coming. Um, so what, what does God want us to offer up? All our sacrifices, um, again, especially f um, for the offenses committed against his mother. Um, and why is that important? Because I, I was actually, we, I was just talking with David about this. And, uh, and, um, you know, when you offend somebody's mother, we're, we're talking about, like, if, if, you, if you offend me, you know, it's like, I could deal with that. That's, that's fine. But if you talk about my mom, then we have some problems. You know, N nobody wants you talking about their mom. And that's the same, even more so with our Lord. You know, like, 
she is she's the immaculate conception you know you're, you're to talk about her so don't mess with his mother you know uh, uh, so again um, offering up our sacrifices and what is that doing again it's it's bringing us to a deeper love of Jesus like what what do lovers do they share the most intimate part about themselves with with each other and and you know when we suffer it's difficult you know when we have to the different crosses that come in our lives, it's, it's hard, you know, but what is it? Our Lord's saying, I, I'm revealing my heart to you, you know, in the sacred heart, you know, what is Jesus? He's putting his heart on the line. It's like, I, I want you to share in this. It's like, yeah, it's hard, but that's bringing us into a deeper love. He's sharing the most intimate thing uh, with us, the cross, like the greatest love uh, of the world has ever seen and will ever see. God wants us to share in that and, and in a deep way. So it's like when we have those sufferings to, Kind of see them as opportunities, and 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 even and the joys, whatever comes at us that we we just accept. You know, Saint Therese. You know, I don't I don't want suffering. I don't want consolations. I want whatever you want to give to me, Lord. Um, and again, that that childlike trust um, and confidence that we we pray that you know we ask the, Our Lady, Oh my Jesus, it is for love of Thee and for the conversion of poor sinners and a reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary that I offer this sacrifice to You. Okay, and then the last, the last S, the first Saturdays. Um, so the first five Saturdays, what are they in reparation for the offenses committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary? So we spoke about, you know, we don't want to offend, obviously, our Lord. You know, again, that, that's baseline, but also his mother. And so what are the um, first five Saturdays making reparation for the five uh, blasphemies committed against uh, Our Lady? So the first is against her Immaculate Conception. Number two, against her, her virginity. Uh, three, against her divine maternity. So we see the first really, uh, you could say three Marian dogmas are, are blasphemed. Um, number four, the blasphemies of those who publicly seek to sow in the hearts of children indifference or scorn or even hatred for this immaculate mother. And five, the offenses of those who outrage her directly in her holy images. Here, my daughter, uh, the Lord says, is the reason why the Immaculate Heart of Mary inspired me to ask for this little act of reparation. And so, again, how do we make the first five Saturdays? We've got to be in a state of grace. Um, and everything is done for the intention to, uh, to make reparation for the offenses committed against Our Lady. So what is that confession? Uh, eight days before or after? Um, you know, and then when we say, just make that act, you know, I'm making this, this confession, the spirit of reparation for the, for the offenses committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary, whichever one you're doing it for. We pray the rosary and an additional, and then after the rosary, additional 15 minutes of meditation of uh, one of the mysteries of the rosary, and it can be, it can be other mysteries as well. Um, but the important thing is that we're staying focused on, on our, our, we're staying with Our Lady, um, meditating on her life and the life of her son, you know, all through the eyes of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And then the final one, uh, to receive communion. Um, and an important note about this, like, let's just say you, I don't know, something happened on Saturday and you weren't able to um, fulfill it that first Saturday. You can ask a priest. Our Lord told Sister Lucia, this is very important. Uh, you can get a dispensation by a priest if you really need to fulfill, you know, the first Saturday. That could be transferred to the that Sunday. Um, you know, it's not, we don't want to push it off, but you know, like every one of those be the, on the Sunday, but sh I mean, should that happen? You know, the Lord is, is, is merciful and he's, he's, he's helping us out. Um, and what is the uh, promise of Our Lady for those who fulfill this is that she, she said she would assist at the hour of death with the graces necessary for salvation, the souls who make the first Saturday. Again, so it's important. We're, we're consoling Our Lady's heart and she's going to help us uh, to grow in, in, in holiness and um, yeah, that's, that's just, I mean, to assist at the hour of death, all the graces we need for salvation. We're going to need every grace uh, at that point and, and also throughout our lives, but especially, especially at that moment. Um, but one of the things our Lord told Sister Lucia, because, you know, many times I think maybe, you know, a lot of us, maybe we've done the first five Saturdays and we keep, we keep doing them. But this is important. He says, it is true, my daughter, that many souls begin the first Saturdays, but few finish them. And those who do complete them, do so in order to receive the graces that are promised thereby. It would please me more if they, would, if they did five with fervor and with the intention of making reparation to the heart of your heavenly mother than if they did 15 in a tepid and indifferent manner. 
Again, just, just one time with great love, you know, make it count. And that, that goes with, with all of our prayers, you know. It's, you know, even, even with our rosary, how many times it's like we're just trying to get it in. It's like, well, let, just, you know, we want to do it as best we can. You know, ask Our Lady to help us. And sometimes, you're right, maybe there's not great, uh, you know, we, we don't feel uh, great devotion, but that doesn't mean that that could be our best prayer of the week, too. You never know. Um, because it's, it's completely selfless, uh, those times. But, um, but we do want to do it with, with as much fervor as we can. Um, so at least once and, and make it count. But then, you know, uh, you know love, is, love is not just satisfied. I think the, the beautiful thing with all, all the devotions, it's like, yes, we want to we wanna keep doing them over and over. We want to keep doing the first nine Fridays. We want to keep uh, doing the first five Saturdays. But, but we want to make it count every, every time we do it. And, and why? To, again, to grow in in devotion for our Lord, a deeper love, you know, love, love never settles. It's, uh, you know, only, you know, Maximilian Kobe says only love is creative, you know, like we don't want to just, oh, I, I've done it. Now I could just kind of rest. It's like, that's not what love does. You see Maximilian Kobe. It's like until the whole world is consecrated, he's not resting. So what, well, you know, where does that put us? We want to be saints, right? Until, until the whole world's consecrated to our lady, even then it's, it's going to be, well, we got to step it up. We got to more, more devotion. It's like love we just, you know, the virtue of charity, you could, there, you could always grow. And, you know, same with faith, hope, and love, and, and charity, obviously, same. Uh, but never settles. We, we always want more. We could always have more grace. Um, and again, it's, it's not just about, oh, I want to merit for heaven. That's, that's part of it. But I want to love God, again, back to those saints, like no soul ever has. Um, and that, that's what Our Lady did, just constantly saying yes to our Lord. So, so why is this important? Um, so if enough people do this um, and we get to that critical number, you know, a lot of people ask, did the consecration happen or not? It's, you know, the, our, I think the big point is, is if enough people do this, we get to that certain critical number, you know, we'll satisfy heaven's desire, the, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So I go back to Maxine and Colby. Until the whole world is, is consecrated, we're not, you know, we're, we shouldn't be resting. You know, there's plenty of work to be, to be done it's like, again, that going back to those five pillars. Um, so, you know, obviously staying out of mortal sin, stop offending God, um, and, and, you know, rendering ourselves effective. Um, so, we have, so we have those five things, um, those five pillars. Um, Roman Catholic SOS, so rosary, consecration, scapular, offer up sufferings, and Saturdays. Um, and what do we see? That the first three, rosary, consecration, scapular, our devotion. And then reparation, offer up sufferings and sacrifices. And Saturday, that's, that's the reparation part. And again, all to enkindle that fire of God's love within us. To live in the state of grace. You know, to, have a, to want to have a great love for God. And to take a deeper share in our Lord's passion. So it's all, it's all about falling in love with, with God. Staying in love and falling deeper into that love. And so this is our SOS to heaven um, one, uh, that this, so yeah, this is our SOS to heaven, and it's only something Catholics can do. Um, so that makes Catholics, you could say, the most critical, important people on earth, uh, because only Catholics have the ability to, get, um, to give heaven what heaven requires to save souls, to save the world from chastisement. So this is our Roman Catholic SOS. And that's it. So we'll conclude with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.